felt as well. Yes, please, Kwaiju. Thanks so much for the, the questions. Uh, of course, looking at the images that have just been shared and following the images that are being shared on social media and also all the news reports that still dominate the international media, it's clear that the current situation is, is tragic. And uh, for those of us who've been following Lebanon for some time, it's even more tragic given that this has come on top of challenging situation in the country with the economy and also the situation with COVID-19. And uh, my heart and the hearts of millions of scouts around the world go out to all people of Lebanon and uh, scouts and guides in particular. It really is uh, a tragic situation. But as scouts, we can also see some glimmers of hope through this tragedy. And I and many others have been truly inspired by the, the courage, not just of the scouts and guides in Lebanon and Beirut in particular, but all people in Lebanon uh, and Beirut who are looking at the situation and thinking, okay, uh, we've been through a lot as a city and as a country over many years. This is another challenge that we have right in front of us right now that we need to find a way to get through. And the courage and bravery and heroism of everyone who's putting their efforts into dealing with the situation is an example to all of us around the world. It's truly humbling. And I think it gives us hope that uh, humanity, uh, sometimes we see the best of humanity, unfortunately, through tragic circumstances such as this. But Scouting and its response, I think, uh, gives us hope. And I think uh, my, my immediate feeling uh, when the explosion took place was one of deep concern. And I think in a matter of minutes after the explosion took place, my immediate reaction was, I hope Sarah Rita is OK. <laughs> and reached out to message her to check. And as soon as she confirmed that she was shaken, but OK, then started to check on the well-being of uh, other friends and colleagues in uh, Lebanon. And then after that uh, checking in on people uh, took place, I started to think about what should scouting's response be? And what was fantastic to see was that scouting's response occurred entirely naturally, as one would expect. It didn't require people at world level or regional level to start making things happen. Scouts on the ground knew instinctively what needed to be done and they rolled up their sleeves and put the needs of other people before themselves. And so then my attention was, what can we do to support the scouts in Lebanon? And uh, we've done a number of things that we can maybe talk about later on uh, to help with that. If I've got a message to the people of Lebanon and to Beirut in particular, it is that we are with you uh, you're in our thoughts and prayers. We know that this situation will take some time to resolve. And for scouts in Lebanon and Beirut in particular, my message to all of you is to know that your brothers and sisters all around the world are truly inspired by the service that you are rendering to your fellow citizens, country people at uh, at this difficult time. And that, I think, uh, sets an example for other scouts around the world when they start to think about the steps that they might take if there happens to be some tragic circumstance, whether it's human-induced or a natural disaster. But uh, our hearts go out uh, to everyone. Beirut is very much in all our hearts at this time. Thank you. You're on Thank mute. You. Yeah. Thank you very much, Craig, for this, I mean, uh, fruitful and, uh, yeah, for you, your talk. It's really, uh, I mean, a big support. Your support is highly, uh, I mean, appreciated for the Lebanon and, and the Lebanese scout as well. So here I need to translate a little bit for our uh, listeners and watchers. Thanks for the question. It's a great question, actually, because it goes right to the heart of what scouting is all about. 
and the scout method and the fact that when times are good, uh, we are an educational movement. We provide amazing programs that help young people to develop skills that are going to help them through life, not just in the future, but right now. Uh, and so the curious thing is that scouting is not a humanitarian agency, but we do provide training to young people with the skills that prepare them for situations that they could never imagine. Uh, and I think it's fair to say that most people could never imagine that a city could experience an explosion like the explosion that uh, came down on Beirut. But the proof of the value of the Scout programme and the educational experience that we provide young people is that it equips them with both the skills and importantly the values that put others before themselves. And so whilst we don't go out to pretend and be a humanitarian agency, we're not seeking to compete with humanitarian agencies. We do provide young people with the, the skills and the values to step up in those moments of crisis, moments of tragedy, when society calls on those who have those skills and values. And that's what I think is so encouraging about what we've seen is that clearly within the program in Lebanon, scouts are equipped with the skills and values to respond, which is why you saw such a natural response to the tragedy. It didn't require weeks of mobilization. It was instantaneous. And that speaks to the true value of scouting as being both a local and a global movement. We're present in one and a half million communities around the world and scouts in villages, towns and cities know the challenges that they face during the good times, but they also know the role that they have to step up and serve during difficult times. So I think uh, scouting does have a role to play in the immediate aftermath in either natural disasters or human induced disasters and also for the long term and in many disasters around the world, often you see agencies coming in from the outside to help for a short period of time and then they go. The beauty of scouting is that it's permanent. It's there before, during and after uh, a crisis. And long after uh, the international community has come in and helped with the response to this situation, scouting will still be there, picking up the pieces, working with people who've been affected uh, physically and mentally uh, over a long period. Thank you. Certainly, uh, I'll maybe go back a step and just uh, uh, reflect on a point that I made uh, very early on uh, during this call, which is that naturally scouts in Lebanon have uh, stepped up and have responded to the situation, obviously without requiring any external support. However, obviously the scale of this uh, tragedy is significant and that has got many people outside of Lebanon who are friends of Lebanon thinking, if I can't be there in person to help, what can I do? And that's why we've seen responses at the level of other national scout organizations and associations. So in France, for example, which has a, a long history and relationship with Lebanon, Scudi Guide de France, have uh, been pushing their members to contribute to a fund to help uh, with the situation. And uh, other individuals have been reaching out to us to offer uh, support as well. Now, within the World Scouting setup, we have a very strong collaboration with the World Scout Foundation, and we have something called the Scout Donation Platform. And so very early on, in the aftermath, we uh, discussed the viability of establishing a special project to try and uh, encourage as many scouts and other people around the world who wanted to donate money to help the cause to do so. And uh, the initial target was set at $10,000. And uh, we've now increased that to $20,000 because so many people are giving generously today. I'm pleased to say that we're at $8,400. Uh, 
And if there's anyone watching who would like to put their hand in their pocket and share whatever they can, we know it's difficult during these times, but every little helps, then go to donate.scout.org and pledge your support. In addition to the Scout donation platform, uh, we've benefited from a very generous donor who's donated uh, a, a significant sum of money, and that has been matched by uh, funding from the Messengers of Peace, uh, which Jemima spoke about earlier. So uh, many of us outside of Lebanon who would love to be there right now, working hand in hand with the Scouts, uh, we are trying to do our bit uh, from a distance to help you uh, in a way that uh, we think we can help, which is by uh, generating the funds that at the right moment in time we can pass to Lebanon to support the Scouts with uh, their efforts. We've also benefited from trying to leverage some of the relationships that we have. So uh, you may be aware that uh, some of the uh, Society of St. Vincent de Paul uh, schools in Lebanon, uh, Scouts meet there. And last year, the, Society, the International Confederation of the Society of St. Vincent uh, de Paul uh, bestowed on World Scouting uh, special recognition for its humanitarian work. And very quickly after this uh, tragedy occurred, uh, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul reached out to ask if there was any way that their members on the ground in Lebanon uh, could help as well. So we've been doing our best, uh, not on the ground, but from a distance in trying to help with the effort there. And we will continue to do what we can uh, to support uh, in that way. That is our uh, commitment. Thank you. Yeah, I've got uh, two final messages. The first one is a reminder for anyone who wants to donate to the Scout Donation Platform to go to donate.scout.org, find the project, and whatever you can give, please give generously. The second message that I have is for all the Scouts in Lebanon who are working hard to deliver incredible service to the people of Beirut at this difficult time. And that message is thank you. Thank you from your 54 million fellow Scouts from all around the world for living up to the promise that you've made to do your duty to help other people. You are a true inspiration to so many. So thank you. And stay safe, look after yourselves and look after each other. And when the time comes, I look forward to being able to visit and to thank you in person. Thank you so much.